What's good, everybody? I am Kevin here, and welcome to yet another live stream. Um, this time, I'm not in my usual home studio, so apologies if things aren't as smooth as usual. Um, but I have a great slew of topics for you, like you see right here. Um, the I'm gonna talk a little bit about the markets. I like to start off with that, and then we're gonna talk about spot ETF being rejected, some drama with Discord wanting to integrate crypto and ethereum technology starbucks ad a potentially adopting crypto mcdonald's nft um, mark zuckerberg talking about the metaverse and web3 michael saylor talking about DeFi, and a lot more interesting stuff right so um as always these are my live streams they're a little bit more kind of raw and not as polished as my usual videos but the point is to chat with you guys um, about everything on your mind in the crypto space and just share my thoughts on the most interesting topics, right? So welcome. And if you can give me a quick hello in the live chat and you can uh, let me know if you can hear me all right, that would be much appreciated. And also I will leave timestamps for those of you watching afterwards. Um, but I want to give a quick shout out to one sec. Let me change this right here. A quick shout out to our um, sponsors for our channel, CoinMe, and they have this crypto literacy quiz along with CoinDesk and some other big names in the crypto space. I took it and I only got a 94%, which meant I missed one question, unfortunately, but apparently 98% people fail this. So I'll leave the link in the description that y'all should take afterwards just to try it out. And I know they, so just a heads up, they do ask for your email address. So just put a burner address if you don't want to use your normal one, okay? That's what I did. Um, but anyways, let me go back to my topics here and see the live chat. Sounds good, thank you. Uh, Jose, Chon Kit Fong, and Chrissy, welcome everybody. So like I said, I like to start with the markets, okay? Um, and as you can see, it's pretty sideways for the past few days. A lot of chop, right? Um, not clear if it's going to break down, like I'm just talking Bitcoin, break down below um, 64K, maybe to 62K or even under 60K. Maybe we'll get like a big nuke before going back upwards. Personally, I would like to see that so that it would give more clear entry points. Right, like if we go to under 60k for Bitcoin, that's when I would start trying to play around with uh, perpetual futures on like DYDX. I would want to go leverage long on Bitcoin and Ethereum, not because I really like to trade leverage often. I mean, you guys know me; I don't really do that on this channel because um, we're more about the fundamental analysis, but. I do think using those like perpetual futures and going long or short is a great way to hedge near the end of the bull market. So instead of selling our Bitcoin or Ether or whatever coins you have, you could go short with like proper risk management, stop losses and things like that. But that could be a great way to like protect your value without having to sell and hence like generating a taxable event, right? So thinking about hedging is something I'm doing, gonna do a lot and I'm probably gonna make some content about. So let me know in the live chat and in the comments as well um, if you wanna see some, some videos and some content about how to hedge properly for like end of bull market. Of course, we can't tell when that is, so our hedge may go against us, but that's always the case, right? We just gotta do it properly, proper sizing, proper management and so forth. Um, let's see one sec. Okay. So going to the uncertain markets is where we're starting. Right. And, um, there's a few things I want to share with you. You know how I like to look at kind of, um, one sec. Let me see if I could scroll in here. Ah, I can scroll in. Okay, cool. Right here. So Pentoshi, um, one of the traders on crypto Twitter that I, I look at, he says the same thing, that he hopes 
we giga nuke because market has been too easy for months and people can't handle like this chop, this 2% dip. And so he also said that he'd love to see a 20, 30% wipeout on alts, a usual bull run dip. Um, so that's also what I hope for. That would be great entry points for any alts that you've been holding off on buying and a great entry points for some like perhaps perpetual future leverage longs as well, in my honest opinion. And so also, um, Will Clemente, an on-chain trader, you know how I like on-chain analysis. He has been saying that uh, we're in the distribution phase of the bull market. So it's like middle towards end, maybe like three quarters of the way through um, a bull run. Not We're not at the end already, but if you look at this chart, there is like this little red section right there. That means that long-term holders are starting to sell into strength. Um, like long-term holders take profit when things go higher and higher and higher, right? So that's what we're starting to see just a little bit. Remember, we saw a lot of this in this like spring or summer of 2021 when we had that top and then crashed down. We saw a lot of this red print beforehand. So. It is just starting right now, just flipping. Um, so that means we may still have like what? One, two, three, four, five, six months to go. I mean, it's not gonna play out exactly like that, right? But the point is we may be getting close to another either cycle top or um, just like regional top per se for Bitcoin. and. I think that lines up with me because I called for a Q1 2022 top. A lot of people are calling for end of year, like by November, December, like before. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. And another quick like short term thing is that um, he looked at funding rates. And this is like when too many people go leverage long, there is like a flush out, you know, like a leverage cascading liquidation flush out. That's just how the market likes to act usually. So right now, funding rates have calmed down, which means um, what he said, a lot of greed has been neutralized for now. And maybe that's good for a continuing of the bear of the bull run. But personally, I like to see a further dip, at least to under 60K, maybe also to take more of a bleed to get us better entry points, right? That's what I'm crossing my fingers for. Um, one other thing I want to talk about is if you guys know me, I've been a big critic of Plan B's model. And I think I've been saying that I think he's intellectually dishonest because his model S2F is just broken and makes no sense. Um, but he says like 98K by December, like by the end of November. So. That requires us to move pretty fast. It's already mid-November. That requires some parabolic moves soon. So if we stay around this level and don't go as high as like 80K, 90K, 100K very, very soon, which could happen, but then that means he would be wrong. Just like I predicted. I think he's going to be wrong sooner rather than later. Um, I'm actually blocked by him because he blocks all of his critics. I didn't even say anything that bad, but um, he I can't show you his more details. Go to his Twitter page to see his updated numbers for like the floor the floor price and like the average price. But it's not looking good for him and his model. And I'm just gonna say I called it S2F is broken. It has been broken, and he is irrelevant as a um, model creator, at least as of right now. So let me go back. So that was the market uncertainty. I'm going to move on to a few more exciting topics, but let me look at the live chat. Shorted? I would not short it, Corey, because like funding rates reset, it might not go down much further, to be honest. I am looking for an entry point for a long, actually. Um, so thank you for asking. But let's go back to right here so denied news that the sec has denied vanex spot etf 
cause Bitcoin to dip. That is what we all expected, right? I mean, the general consensus is that we won't get a spot ETF until sometime middle or late 2022, right? And um, let me see. Let me just show you what they're saying. So, okay, let me close this. Van Eck, not surprising at all. Um, yeah, so actually the futures approval was a little bit surprising to me because I actually didn't think that would happen this soon. I thought it would take like a couple more months, but it happened, right? We got our futures ETFs, but now there's still not liking the idea of spot ETFs. Um, but a lot of people don't, they're like Bitcoin bulls and maximalists shouldn't like a spot ETF because it's just a lot of like not your keys, not your coins, a lot of like institutional manipulation and things like that. So I do think it will help us rock it, but long-term it may play some games with the Bitcoin markets like it is it does with the gold markets when you're when people aren't even holding like real bitcoin but only like paper bitcoin if that makes any sense so that's kind of what i'm what i'm thinking here um but yes let me go back to here this is some drama for you guys and i hope it's not too political <laughs> I'm not trying to get political here, okay? But hear me out. Discord was teasing. I mean, you know Discord. There's a lot of crypto groups on Discord. Imagine a place built for gamers. Has 150 million monthly active users. It's a lot of revenue. It's a Web3 sleeper. Imagine a place for Discord to kind of go together with Web3. Discord plus Ethereum. MetaMask integration, right? That's what he says. CEO of Discord, Jason Citron, Citron. Probably nothing, but a lot of people got mad about it. They said all sorts of things. And he says, thanks for all the perspectives, everyone. We have no current plans to ship this internal concepts, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of people are like, oh, pyramid schemes, environment. We're going to cancel our Discord subscriptions. Blah, blah, blah. Um, canceled my Nitro, et cetera, et cetera. And I just want to point out that a lot of these people are like far left, like leftists, putting pronouns, pyramid schemes, energy. Just scroll down. It's like all of those people are hating on it. Canceling their subscriptions. Right here. Author, streamer, artist, he, they. I mean, I'm just pointing that out. They're all under this profile, right? And they're all hating on crypto. And so many like leftists hating on crypto, hating on NFTs. It's just, just crazy. Right? See? Just look at the, just hover over their profiles and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's like all of them come in waves, the Twitter mob. And um, what this is what Jason Choi said. Looks like Discord is shelving its Ethereum integration due to backlash over climate concerns from the Twitter mob. Anyone know how this narrative around NFTs equal planet killer began? And some people said, Meltem said that it's when Ethereum community threw Bitcoin under the bus for its energy usage. And somehow thought that was useful. But a lot of people is saying like, like this is, needs to be, we need to fight on the messaging, right? Because this narrative isn't necessarily true. And woke mob receiving bad info about energy consumption. So, yeah. Just wanted to point this out. A lot of drama around this. Uh, that's why I called it Discord drama right here, right? 
Um, yeah, so let me know what y'all think, too, about all this outrage over Discord potentially integrating with Web3, with Ethereum wallets, and who knows what we can do there. I think that'd be pretty cool, actually, because I use Discord as well. Um, but yeah, this is, I'm just saying there's a, there's a ideological battle going on and we need to fight back with messaging, um, and better marketing and branding because it's like, ideally we don't have the mob against us, you know? So yeah, I hear you guys in the comments as well. Um, let's see. Okay. That was that drama. But... So, like I said at the beginning of this video, um, CoinMe, who we work with in a channel, they sponsor us, so thank you for them. They are part of this Crypto Literacy Month. So, like, how much do you know about crypto? And then let me just walk through this quick quiz real quick. Let me zoom out a little bit. Let me zoom out. Okay. Okay. You can see this. According to them, 98% of people fail this basic quiz. And it, they ask simple but sometimes tricky questions like, what's the max supply of Bitcoin? Of course, we know this one. But it's, and they have some stats. Um, quick heads up, they do ask for your email at the end. So if you want to take it and you don't like giving out your email, just give a burner email. That's what I did. I hope you have burner emails at least. I mean, that's like pretty common in for the internet space and just in crypto in general. Um, but I missed one question and it was a little bit tricky. So I feel bad, but I missed one question. I did not get a 100%. Maybe you guys should see if you can get a 100%. And I think I left the link um, down below in the description, but I'll check after the stream as well. But anyways, so... Starbucks is, quote, um, Kevin Johnson, CEO of Starbucks, said, let me zoom in, actually. Let me zoom back, zoom back in for you guys. Okay, there you go. You can see it better now. Um, Starbucks is, quote, going to, through blockchain or other innovative technologies to explore how to tokenize their rewards program. So I think, first of all, okay, so they are just exploring. A lot of people are hyping it up more like they're, it's going to come next week, next month. Probably not. But that would be pretty interesting tokenizing. It's the thesis, right? Some people said everything in the world that can be tokenized is going to be tokenized. I thought they were kind of exaggerating that. But if Starbucks tokenizes their rewards program, people are already tokenizing carbon credits as we see with climate DAO, that is a strong step in their thesis that everything in the world is going to be tokenized, right? And I know there's a lot of skeptics. Exploring is a lot long distance from going. Um, and some people are like, like, what the heck? This is weird, like... Um, but I, I like it. I think it's cool to to experiment um, with this. But let me know what y'all think. Another thing he said, McDonald's sells NFTs. Here you go. Here's the NFTs. McRib NFT. One of 10 exclusive ones. That's so fun. That's so interesting. And uh, no purchase necessary. 50 US states plus DC. 18 only. Winner needs crypto wallet to receive NFT. So that's pretty cool that they're playing around with this. This is on their official Twitter too. So I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, another thing is, have y'all seen this interview by Gary Vaynerchuk and Mark Zuckerberg? If not, you should watch it. It's awesome. Um, I First of all, you know how everyone says like Mark is a robot. I think... This really humanizes him. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a huge fan of Zuck, but I know a lot of people don't like him, and I, I know why. But this is quite interesting to hear his thoughts on the metaverse. And he Gary asked him, because Gary V loves NFTs. 
because he's a big baseball card collector, etc. So Gary or so Mark Zuckerberg says he tries out all the stuff about buying NFTs and playing around with the crypto Ethereum Web3 ecosystem. He's playing around, he tries stuff, he's bought NFTs. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. And um of course I prefer a more decentralized public like metaverse instead of letting Facebook or Mark Zuckerberg like control all the platforms as the gatekeeper, etc. But this is good for our space. Like we're going to get a lot more investments, a lot more innovation, um, and that's going to seep into like just crypto and NFTs used throughout the future metaverse. And let me know what y'all think about the metaverse. I mean, to be honest, I like DeFi more and some other niches, but I know a lot of people in my community and like other um, creators and analysts I talk to, they love GameFi or Metaverse plays. Like I, I didn't buy any of those. Axie, AXS, um, Sandbox, I didn't buy any of those. But I do think they're quality though. I do think they're quality. Um, maybe I want to buy the MBI, the Metaverse Index made by um, Index Cooperative or Token Sets. Let me show you all that real quick actually. Index Co-op. Right here, Metaverse Index. It went up a lot recently. But it is like you buy that token and it holds all of these other tokens in various allocations. Illuvium, AXS, Decentraland, Engine Coin, Sand, Audio, Yield Guild Games. Dang, I don't even know some of these smaller ones, right? But they hold a allocation of all of these. So you can just buy one token instead of buying like all of those and paying a, a ton of gas fees or just the, it's a huge hassle, right? That's why I don't buy tokens that often because it's a huge hassle unless I really like it and think it's promising. So yeah, let me go look at the live chat real quick. All right, all righty, all righty. Um, let's see. Hello, everybody. What's Merit Circle? Is that a index? Troy, welcome. Court, Jizzy, Lenoth, Forever Young. Hello, everybody. Clayton, what's good? So a few more topics. Um, feel free to write any thoughts and topics, projects, etc. you want us to check out. But in the meantime, let's move on to the next topic, which is um, Michael Saylor. You know he's a um, Bitcoin god, per se. But he is kind of hating on, I wouldn't say hating, but kind of like saying that DeFi is not worth the risk because um, SEC Commissioner Carolyn A. Cranshaw wrote a statement on this. Like, And Michael Saylor's conclusion was that no existing DeFi platform are deemed compliant at this time and regulation is coming. The only investment grade crypto asset is Bitcoin. So a lot of people were pointing out though that it's not really um, like Eric Voorhees says decentralized systems can, can't can ever be compliant. So, yeah. And let me see. Um, someone read. Okay, see. Someone read it. It literally doesn't say that and looked at the conclusion. Let's just go to the straight up the, the raw statement itself. Okay. And scroll down to the conclusion. So let me zoom in a little bit more for you. Let me see if you can see this better. Okay, so it doesn't sound like she actually wants to just skewer DeFi to me by reading this. But like some DeFi projects fit neatly within our jurisdictions. Other may struggle to comply with the rules as currently applied. Um, so she wants to work with DeFi space to make it better. Hopefully, fingers crossed that they'll be more lenient. Maybe have that like sandbox per se um, where you can test things out before fully decentralizing like Hester Pierce was pushing for. But... 
yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. I'm pretty heavily invested in DeFi projects. So hopefully this will end up well for DeFi and not just like be um, like just clamped down on all of DeFi, right? Because let's look at DeFi Llama and there is a lot of total value locked, right? It's been like, wait, I have to zoom out, my bad. Um, let me zoom out for you. Here we go. So let me see if you can see this properly. Yeah, it's over 200 billion total value locked and it's like pretty much been up only. This would not be, look good if there was like harsh action from the SEC. So hopefully it will be reasonable and projects will like not get wrecked by this because DeFi is amazing and I've been looking all over it. I'll do the niche. I mean, you've seen my recent videos, DeFi 2.0. Um, and this next week, I'm going to have a video on ENS, the airdrop token, and maybe like top 10 other airdrops you got to look out for and spend some time qualifying for it because we got like 10 to 50K on the ENS airdrop. That was amazing. Just FYI, I have not sold it yet. I have not claimed it yet for some tax reasons. So there's that. Um, but yeah, let's see what else, what else, what else. Another thing that is kind of interesting and semi worrying is that the Bitcoin mempool is empty. That means people aren't really paying um, or aren't really sending Bitcoin transactions. And that's a little bit of a problem because remember, miners get block rewards, but they also get fees. So if there's not a lot of mempool, there's not a lot of fees. Like, who's incentivizing all that hash rate? I mean, right now, it's the block rewards. But in the future, that's going to get less and less, right? So we need fees on the Bitcoin network. We need usage. Um, so that is something that's worrying, especially for Bitcoin maximalists. Something to think about, in my opinion. But yeah, let's go to the live chat. Let's see what you guys have to say. Maybe we can wrap up with a little bit of... Just looking at some interesting projects. Um, just some sharing some gut feeling about various projects. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Ooh, dang. A lot of comments. All right. Let's see. EXRD. Yes, I do hold my Radix. I covered them. Um, they did sponsor our channel with full disclosure, but I held all my Radix. I still hold. So that is a vote of confidence. Putting my money where my mouth is. Link and oracles are very important. I mean, that's what like makes a lot of DeFi run in terms of metaverse and GameFi, DeFi. I'll have to see. I haven't researched that much as to how Link and oracles would integrate with um, metaverse and GameFi projects. With DeFi, it's really obvious. But yeah, SEC will enforce KYC. That's a great question, Forever Young. I think just Bitcoin transactions overall. Um, LTO. Discount Samsung Mao. I don't know if I like that, Bitcoin Jake. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Samsung uh, because of all the, like, just drama and, like, complaining he does. XRD. I do like XRD. Do like it. LTO. What is that? Let me take a look. Let me close this other stuff and... Take a look at some coins. LTO network. Okay. Um, let me see if y'all can see this. Maybe I'll zoom out a bit for you. LTO network. Okay. What the heck is this? On chain trust. Interesting. Business information. Okay, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of like all these business blockchains. I like more like open to everyone, like retail users can use as well. 
I mean, obviously, business to business is is great, but I haven't seen any like huge adoption that really moves the needle in terms of generating more like on chain transactions and gobbling up the tokens of whether whichever network they're using. Uh, let's take a look at the price action though. Oh wow, look at this. See, I'm always scared of these unnatural pumps because when it pumps so high like this, it's like, when it pumps so fast like this, it's like gonna drop pretty fast too. Like IOTEX, let me just show you there. I like IOTEX um, better than IOTA at least, but these pumps are really crazy. Like, dang, 10x massive pumps. Yeah, I mean, it's doing well, it's doing well, but just saying. Okay, um, what else is there? What else is there? LTO network, interesting. You DM with Samsung, okay, I see. I see, that's cool. Um, let me just take a look at just the main coins. Let's see which ones have been doing the best. Let me switch to, I always like to do this. I like to switch to BTC ratio and then look at seven day. Loop Ring has been doing well, which I'm surprised at because I looked at this project a long time ago and decided not to buy because it had like zero activity. Um, so actually, let me add, did you know you could customize it? 90 day too. Wait, let me move 90 day. Uh, 90 day and then I'll move it after the 30 day. Boom, okay. Wow, okay, I mean, Life Peer has been doing well. I looked at that before, decided not to buy, but maybe I should have. Um, Litecoin, I swung trade a bit, but now it's kind of chilling in terms of, B this is BTC ratio, by the way. These are all BTC ratio. Helium, I like. Crypto.com coin. I should have bought and hold, held more of that. Um, let's see, Mina, only 9%. Cadena has been destroying. I'm gonna make a video on that. I'll try to put it out before the end of November, like I promised y'all. A lot of layer one still, it's still layer one season apparently. Near, Icon, Avalanche. I mean, Tron is not a dead project in my mind, but yeah. I'm surprised Stax doesn't do better, to be honest, because it's like built on Bitcoin and Miami coin, City Coins runs on it. Sandbox, of course, doing well as Metaverse play. A lot of other stuff just not worth. It's just down, 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 down against Bitcoin. Um, but those are some interesting projects, right? Let me see what y'all. Elrond. Yes, Elrond, I think is promising. I haven't done a full deep dive into it yet, but um, I do think it's a solid, legit, professional and polished project. Anyways, I know this is a short one today, but thank you all for watching. If you don't mind giving me that quick like, also check out that crypto literacy quiz. Like I said, um, just check out my description, take it real quick, and you will need a burner email if you don't want to use your regular email. All right, so hope you'll have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you enjoyed this live stream and I'll catch y'all next time.